Here's today's In Touch devotion. Today's scripture reading is Job chapter 42, verses 1 through 16. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have declared that which I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Hear now, and I will speak. I will ask you, and you instruct me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I retract, and I repent in dust and ashes. It came about after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends, because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore, take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up a burnt offering for yourselves, and my servant Job will pray for you. For I will accept him, so that I may not do with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has." So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite, went and did as the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job. The Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends, and the Lord increased all that Job had twofold. Then all his brothers and all his sisters, and all who had known him before, came to him, and they ate bread with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversities that the Lord had brought on him. And each one gave him one piece of money, and each a ring of gold. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had fourteen thousand sheep, and six thousand camels, and one thousand yoke of oxen, and one thousand female donkeys. He had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, and the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapuk. In all the land no women were found so fair as Job's daughters, and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. After this Job lived one hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his grandsons four generations. At the end of the book of Job, God grants His servant peace and more than restores his fortunes. We see that the Lord has been paying attention to him all along, even when the opposite seemed to be the case. In Job's questions, we witness the man's faithfulness in turning to God with his doubts. But more than that, we see God's faithfulness in answering those questions with His presence. The story of Job raises an interesting question of its own. When those of us who are believers ask God to answer us, Are we content if He answers only with Himself? It's easy to fall into the trap of believing God hasn't answered us unless we receive everything we've asked for. But Job's example teaches us that how we respond when we feel ignored by God is the true test of our faith. Whether the Lord directly answers our questions or not, what can we learn about His character? Simply what Job learned. I know that you can do all things and that no plan is impossible for you, a truth reasserted by the angel Gabriel in Luke chapter 1, verse 37. God is never absent, never overwhelmed or powerless. Though we may lose sight of this truth, we must remember exactly where He is when we suffer. He is with us. <laughs> 